today in a special two-part session of Judge Faith. Ex-lovers battle after a bad breakup. He told me he was in the middle of his first divorce. No, I didn't tell her the number. I told her I was in the middle of a divorce. Why did you break up? Because I didn't want kids and I wasn't ready at that time to get married. He couldn't open his mouth and say that he loved me. But that's not the end of their relationship. The two of you link up again. You, you got pregnant. And later, Judge Faith reveals the results of a DNA paternity test to determine if the exes are over or family forever. Juan, do you have the envelope? The results of the paternity test are... Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Aisha Bell says she made a bad business deal with her ex and now he's refusing to pay her back. She's also requesting a DNA paternity test to confirm whether or not he's the father of her unborn child. She's suing for money owed and emotional distress. Defendant Juan Rodriguez says he doesn't owe because the money was an investment and he's not the father of the unborn baby. He's countersuing for emotional distress. He's accompanied in court today by his fiancee, Rochelle Bridges. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Bell versus Rodriguez. Thank you, Juan. Aisha Bell? Yes. You are suing the defendant, Juan Rodriguez? Yes for $5,000, $1,500, you say he owes you for a truck and $3,500 in emotional distress? That's correct. And you are countersuing, sir, for $5,000 for emotional distress? That is correct. Okay, let's start from the very beginning because I understand that the two of you were involved in a relationship and mm -hmm. went into an agreement about the, the truck that you're suing for, but why don't you just give me some background on you? So I met him in September of 2013 on uh, Black People Meet dating website, and uh, we started dating pretty much immediately. He told me he was in the middle of a divorce. He had just got joint custody of his daughter. She was six at the time, and he was moving from one place to the next. And it was more like a family environment. We worked together pretty much every day, probably stayed at each other's homes pretty much five, six nights a week. Um, he told me he was in the middle of his first divorce and um, with his daughter. Um, was that and, true? No, no, it was the second divorce. Okay, so you, but you told her that it was your first divorce? No, I didn't tell her the number. I told her I was in the middle of a divorce. Okay, all right. How many children do you have? I have two. Sometime early December, he confessed that he had been married before, um, before that, and told me that this was now his second divorce. I later found out it was actually his third, but I didn't know any of that. I just knew about, I just knew about the one. So anyway, so he was still going through this divorce sometime in May. He said that the divorce was final. He just came by my house after he got off work. We sat outside and talked for a couple hours, and that's where I convinced him well, to I continue. I didn't just come by her house. I mean, I allowed her to talk me into continue dating, which we did. What do you mean um, by you allowed her to talk you into it? I mean, I. Uh, actually, you, you, you I had... liked her or you didn't? You dated her for almost a year, right? Over a year. Over a year? Yes. You're 40 years old and you are 42 years old, so I'm not talking about 22 year old kids in front of me. I'm talking Correct. about grown adults who are making a decision to continue to see each other. Correct. All right, yes. so what happens next? The two of you decide to invest in a car? Right. He, ca he came home and he wanted to sit down and talk, and what he said was, let's go ahead, purchase the car and see what we can do and flip it. Had you been doing that, sir, flipping cars? Yes, ma'am. Buying them and then what do you do, fix them I would, up? I would, sell buy them, for profit? I would buy them on Craigslist um, with, you know, things wrong with them. Um, in turn, I would fix them and then I would sell drive them, them for profit. a while and then sell them. For so profit. the agreement was you would buy a car from Craigslist and the, the two of you would go in together, fix it up and then split the profit? That's what the end result was because initially I let her know that I didn't want to do it. I told her I don't deal with friends, I don't deal with family simply because they would create issues. Okay, so what is the end result? What is the agreement between the two of you about the, the car? That we were going to invest together, um, fix it, and then sell it. So you purchased the car? I purchased the vehicle, yes How much did you pay for it? $1,300. What kind of car is it? It was a 92 Chevy pickup truck. And what money did you put in on the car? I handed him $1,500 cash for the repairs of the vehicle. Is that true? 
Yes. Okay, so what happened? Did you sell the car? Did you make a profit? Because she's suing for her $1,500. No. What happened is, um, as I was going through buying the parts, um, I discovered later on that the frame was twisted on it, which would have cost in excess of what it was worth in order to fix it. I let her know that we weren't going to make the money that we were supposed to make on this vehicle. I ended up selling it for junk for $300. So what happened to her $1,500? It was used for parts. The parts were given with the vehicle when it was junked. What do you mean? You can resell them. I could not. Why? I didn't have a place to store them, Your Honor. I don't have a garage anymore. What's this in your statement about you... H hold on a second. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. This is, you know, what you said in your statement is something different. You, you told me in your, in your statement to the court that she gave you $1,500 to go toward the repairs. You bought some parts like a motor mounts and a new dashboard. But during this process... Correct. You lost your job and you didn't have more money to continue the truck renovation, so you decided to invest in another project with what little money you had left. Right. That wasn't the money from the truck. That was Sir, my personal money. Sir, you got to, you got to, I'm going to tell you right now, Mr. Rodriguez, you got to stop doing this because all I am asking you for is the truth. And that's and what you're I'm not, give you. No, you're not. No, you're not. Coming up. Can lovers still be friends? So the two of you break up in August of 2014. What happens next? Okay, so we had agreed to try and still be friends. What's the point of trying to be friends after? Because we still because... had the truck, and we were really, really allegedly good friends, so we were still trying to be friends. Um, right. And he was yeah, saying... Just so you know, that never works. And later, was the pregnancy on purpose? After we broke up, her thing was that she wanted the kids. She said she had started the process. So you think she got pregnant on purpose? Yes, ma'am. Plaintiff Aisha Bell says her ex is refusing to pay her back, and she knows he's the father of her unborn child. She's suing for money owed and emotional distress. Defendant Juan Rodriguez says he doesn't owe because the money was an investment, and there's no way he's the unborn baby's daddy. He's countersuing for emotional distress. Are you trying to tell me the $1,500 she gave you was for a different investment? No, ma'am. Okay, what? because you just testified in court to me that you spent $1,500 on parts, but you found out there was an issue with the truck, so you then had to junk it and sell it for $300. Yes, that is completely different from what you testified in your statement, that you bought the parts, you then lost your job, and you could not continue the truck renovation. At that point, you decided to invest in another project. To Those get... are two completely different things, and I'm asking you, which one is the truth? I lost my job in the process of working on the truck, yes. I didn't have additional funds to put in the truck. It was after I found out that the frame on the truck was bent. There was nothing I can do other than try to get the money to get more money, which is what I would do, to finish the truck. That didn't work. I ended up having to junk that project as well. At this point, if this is an investment between the two of you, because I'm not even talking about the relationship right now. Yes, I'm just looking at this from a legal standpoint yes, of two people who decide to go in and invest on a project. Yes, ma'am. How do you get to unilaterally make the decision about what to do with all the parts you say you purchased with her money? It's at that point that you have to turn to her and say, hey, this is what's going down. This is the deal. I've spent this money on these parts. Here are the parts. Here are the receipts. If you want to get your money back, because we're going to both take a loss, then these are your options. This is what you get to do. You do not get to unilaterally make a decision on your own about what to do about an investment the two of you agreed to go into together. But I did not, Your Honor. Yes, I did not. Did. No, ma'am. I offered to give her the truck. I offered to have it delivered to her home so that she could have it fixed and so that she can sell it. What happens next? Okay. So, early August is when the relationship started to go south. I actually left the relationship early August. And um, I'd asked him about the truck and the other project, the motorcycle he'd bought. Because which... you're breaking up at this point, so you're trying to tie right, loose Right, but we ends. had agreed to still be friends, so mm -hmm. we were still trying to be friends. Um, right. And he was Just saying, so you know, that never works. But go ahead. <laughs> you know, when I asked him about it, I told him I didn't think that he spent my $1,500 on parts. He said that he, um, you know, that's when he cut off all communication because his character was in question suddenly. So the two of you break up in August of 2014. What happens next? Okay, so we had agreed to try and still be friends. Um, there was still, you know, we talked... What's the point of trying to be friends after... Because we still because... had the truck, and we were really, really allegedly good friends. So I thought... So, you know, it was just the relationship side that wasn't going to work out. Why I did th you break up? Because I didn't want kids, and I wasn't, I wasn't ready at that time to get married. 
And she no. wanted to have kids and get married. Yes, no. ma'am. That's okay. not true. What That's do you not, say the no. reason was? No, we had been, like I said, we had been together for a year at that point, pretty much inseparable, and he couldn't open his mouth and say that he loved me. That was the problem. It wasn't that he didn't love me, he just wouldn't open his mouth and say it. He told me he said it by accident one time when he was hanging up the phone. And so I thought that was pretty much, you know, a deal breaker for me if he couldn't go that far. So she breaks up with you, and what happens? She begins to see her ex-boyfriend again. So after that point, of course, I decided, okay, well, I didn't know what was going to happen with my now fiance. Um, I had just started seeing her. We did somewhat agree to be friends, but it was only because there were other issues involved. Like the truck. Because you've mixed business with pleasure, now the two of you are going to continue to communicate. Which I had told her in the beginning, it wouldn't work. So then you two continue to communicate, but that's not the end of the relationship. It was not, no. All right. What happens next? Okay, so he told me that we would try to work on the relationship. We both had agreed that we were trying to work on the relationship, but, you know, there were issues, so he wasn't comfortable with the fact that, um, you know, that I'd left. And so I'm thinking we're just taking things a lot slower. And so finally, he came to my house on a Sunday. He finally was able to admit that he loved me. He actually told me that. I'm thinking... Did you tell her that? No, ma'am. That never happened? No, ma'am. So that's, she's completely making this up right now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. He told me he had gotten into a bar fight the night before, gotten arrested, came to my house that next day, which we had already agreed he was coming on that Sunday to talk. And then he said he was trying to figure out why it was so difficult to get over this relationship, because he can normally walk away with no issue. And he realized that he did love me. But you're not back together. You're just sort of on the Allegedly fence seeing each it, other, right? Trying to, see it, trying to see if we can work things back out. Things didn't work out? No, ma'am. No. But what happens in November? No. His daughter's birthday was mid-November. His son and his daughter's birthday are back-to-back. -back. And he let me come over and bring her her birthday presents that morning before he had to take her to school because she goes to her mom's house the next day. So I came over, brought her her birthday gift, surprised her. He came to my house that night. I got pregnant that night. And then um, the, a week later, I found out he was seeing somebody else who's his now fiance. <sighs> Hold on a second. Coming up on Judge Faith, the hookup history is revealed. The two of you slept together one time? It was twice. Twice in November. Yes, and you're saying in one of those occasions you, you got pregnant? No, I know the exact day. Okay. I, it was either that night or that morning. <laughs> Plaintiff Aisha Bell says her ex is refusing to pay her back. She's also awaiting the results of a DNA paternity test that will settle the question of whether or not Juan's the father of her unborn child. She's suing for money owed and emotional distress. Defendant Juan Rodriguez says he doesn't owe because the money was an investment. He's countersuing for emotional distress. So in November of 2014, you, the two of you slept together one time? No. It was it was twice. Twice in November. Yes, and you're saying in one of those occasions you, you got pregnant? No, I know the exact day. Okay. I, it was either that night or that morning. Uh, okay, but you don't find out until you don't you don't find out until when? Until um, mid December. So the two of you link up again and then a week later you find out that he's seeing are you the fiance, I'm assuming? Yes. You find out that he's seeing her. Mm -hmm. How did you find that out? He, well, I guess she found out that he, that he was still seeing me, and she had called me or something that day, but I didn't get, I didn't answer the phone. I was in the middle of something else. He called me later that night, like, I don't know if it was 11 or 1 in the morning, and basically he started off telling me she, that he, this girl was stalking him that he had given cooking lessons to, and he spent about an no. hour telling me she was no. stalking him, telling me where she worked. So how did, you tell, how did you communicate then, to her that we, you were dating this young lady. In November, I told her, you know what, yeah, I'm seeing somebody, that's who I'm gonna be with. Okay, I so after, that. a week after the two of you hooked up, you said, yes, I'm seeing someone, this mm -hmm. is who she is, and this is the person I wanna be with. That's and correct. is that the end of the relationship? That was it. Okay, but then you find out that you're pregnant. How many weeks later? It was like, I think, December 16th. Goodness, okay, and so you find out you're pregnant. How do you um, communicate this to Mr. Rodriguez? Okay, the day I found out, and I tried to talk to him face-to-face, -face, and he refused to talk to me face-to-face -face was because the week before he'd come to my house, we talked for like two hours, trying to figure out if we were gonna salvage the relationship. And at the end of the conversation, he was like, well, I'll call you later. But then a couple of hours later, he was like, did somebody call you or text you? She was looking for me while I was at your house. All this and I was like, I didn't know you were sneaking around. So that's why he wouldn't come, that's why he, he wouldn't meet with me. And so I was like, I understand he probably thinks I'm trying to, you See know, him again, right. but at this point, and you so realize you're pregnant. I told him over the phone. Okay, yeah, and I just told him how did phone. you tell him? How did she tell you? How did you find out? Well, if I could go back for just a second, she's leaving the part out, Your Honor. She's leaving out the part where 
she offered for me to just be a donor, a sperm donor, for the child and me sign over my rights. After we broke up, her thing was that she wanted the kids. She said she had started the process. So you think she got pregnant on purpose? Yes, ma'am. Of course it does. Because she told me the whole time that we were together that she could not get pregnant. She assured me that she could not get pregnant. That's not what I told her. And then she made an offer to me that she would start taking fertility pills and that I would be a sperm donor. No, I didn't. And I wouldn't have to have anything to do with the child. I could sign over my rights. And again, that's in one of the emails that I forwarded to the court. And you're saying that this was before she found out she got pregnant? Yes, ma'am. That's not true. No. You never told I him? I told him after Your I Honor? found out when he tried to say May I, I was trapping email? him, that he could sign over his rights if he felt like I was trying to trap him and he didn't have to have anything to do with it. Okay, and so you, he, you have the phone conversation. You tell him, hey, I'm just letting you know I'm Same pregnant. Man. What is his I response to that? He yeah. was just, like, a little taken aback. I was like, I know you're upset. I'm going to I my OB on Monday. Back. I'm going to my OB on Monday. I'll talk to you then. And he just said, okay. Your Honor, when she told me, I literally felt like I lost my life that night. Coming up, was it one last time or linked for life? Now we have something much more serious because we're talking about a life. I agree. And a misunderstanding now about how this life was conceived and the intent behind it. You know, this entire case is, is from both of you, full of misunderstandings. And later, Judge Faith rules. But first, a DNA paternity test reveals if he's the daddy. The results of the paternity test are. Plaintiff Aisha Bell says her ex is the father of her unborn baby. She's suing for money owed and emotional distress. Defendant Juan Rodriguez says there's no way the baby is his. He's countersuing for emotional distress. I had explained to her that I didn't want any more children, that I had been raising children my entire adulthood. I made it very clear to her I didn't want any. Even when she offered me to sign my rights over, I made it clear then, no, because I don't want any children. I gave him These the emails are from January 2015. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when she listed in there about signing over my rights. Okay, I understand what you're saying. You had that conversation, but they are from January of 2015, no, no, which no. is after December 2014 no. when, when she says she told you. The initial offer was not long after we broke up. Because right, she, I understand, but you don't have that thing. in the email, right? No, ma'am, okay. it was a verbal conversation that we had. Okay, well, that's not here nor there at this point, but mm -hmm. you think that she got pregnant on purpose. Yes, ma'am. I stated that to her. Okay. It was a complete and total accident. I have, no, I have no clue how it happened. I do not. And nor was I trying to get pregnant by him, by any stretch of the imagination. The relationship was not on solid ground. I'd actually started the process of looking into uh, adopting or fostering a child and had gone to a meeting to get that process started, just because I really was not thinking about trying to have an, an infant. I still, to this day, am what's so What's so incredible about this case is we, you know, we started off talking about a truck mm -hmm. and, and a misunderstanding about a truck. Mm -hmm. And now we have, a, you know, now we have something much more serious because we're talking about a life. I agree. And a misunderstanding now about how this life was conceived and the intent behind it. You know, this entire case is, is from both of you, full of misunderstandings. Do you accept that this is that she's having your child? No, I've questioned paternity several times, Your Honor. And because simply in the text messages again that I forwarded to the court, she stated that she was trying not to assign this task to someone else. You can't do that if it's not someone else's child. So I've questioned paternity several times, Your Honor. In the conclusion of this special two-part session of Judge Faith, we hear from the other woman. What is this about a, a 911 call you submitted to the court? The phone's ringing. It's Aisha. So he's not answering. He's like, man, you know, he puts it in his pocket. She's crazy. She actually came to my house and tried to kick my front door and back door because I didn't answer my phone. And later, a surprise witness puts the truth in question. Who's your witness? You brought a witness. My witness is his third ex-wife. His daughter's mother. She's here? She's here. Oh. Mm -hmm. And Judge Faith answers the question, is Juan the father of Aisha's unborn baby? The results of the paternity test are... If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.